Hello and welcome to What Now with Anna and Eric. I am Anna. I am Eric. And from this sunny is sunny Florida. From you are sunny Florida. Florida. I am gonna, I'm gonna rub it in. Sunshine, beautiful. Oh, yeah. Tough life. Tough I am life. in cold Michigan. <laughs> uh, you know, we can't all be the celebrity of this one. You know, some of us have to <laughs> hold down the fort. <laughs> It's true. Oh. <laughs> so Good this time. this is our last episode of 2020. We are literally on December 31st. This is the last day of the year. <laughs> yeah, this was a free day. This was a free day. There wasn't it, actually anything on the reading for today. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> and so, how cool. We finished the entire Bible chronologically. Like we're done with I, it. Listen, when so when I actually finished it, there was like, a real sense of accomplishment. I didn't know like how I was going to feel when it was over, but yeah, when I like actually got to the end, I'm like, that's pretty cool. Like this is, this is actually pretty sweet. So yeah. Even if, even if you jumped in part way or you've been with us through the whole thing, you know what? Awesome. 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 It's Mm -hmm. been great. It's been a good time. (laughs) So, so, We finished out strong. We hit on the Johns for second and third John. We hit on Jude, the one page (laughs) of the Bible. (laughs) Huge memoir of (laughs) Yes. And we hit on Revelations. The whole thing. Uh, It was so strange to finish the year just solidly in Revelations. (laughs) Yeah. There, there was no skipping around. There was no, it was just go for it. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, I'm pretty excited to do this. This is good. This is our last uh, podcast as it relates to chronological reading through the Bible. Um, next week we will be doing a full Bible recap, which will be cool oh, yeah. talking about things that really hit us. And then after that, we will be getting into a new series, what now? So we'll still be podcasting, but yeah, we're done with. Who the knows where it's going to go? Yeah, this this book's over with. Next book, bring out another book. <laughs> <It's over with. laughs> we will be referencing back to the Bible. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we'll probably be talking about it. But that's that begs the question: what What are you going to do? Do you have a reading plan in mind for your? own personal Bible study. I'm putting you on the spot totally right oh, now. Oh, yeah. But. Um, I want to get back into, a couple of years ago, I started memorizing Proverbs. I want to get back into that. I memorized oh, three go. chapters. Awesome. Look at that. But there's 31, Scripture, so I didn't get far. <laughs> scripture memorization is very, very tough for me. I am not good at it, but that is definitely a very good way to go about it. Mm-hmm. So. What about you? So... Because we had so much fun with the Bible in a year, I am yeah. totally going to try it. Um, I think we talked about it a couple times during this podcast, but there is that 30 day shred to go <gasps> through the whole Bible in 30 days. You're going to try that? So Ooh. I'm going to try it, but I'm going to listen. So I'm going to listen to it because that's what I've been kind of listening to what people reading articles on people that have done it. And if you listen to it, at like one and a half times speed, you can get through it pretty good throughout the day. Yeah. But really the whole point of it is to just, to just take it in and just make notes of things that pop out at you. Like, so it's really not diving deep at all. It's just, if something yeah. pops out, write it down. If something pops out. So I think I'm going to try that for January. And then I want to deep dive into Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but I want to start just as, while it's fresh. I want to see like, if I go through it quickly, like what does stand out and what is different or the same from reading it throughout the year. So that's going to be my, I, I'm just, I'm going to try it. I'm gonna, <laughs> it seems interesting. It seems really cool. So I'm going to give would. it a shot. You could do that. Yeah. Eric. yeah. I figure I figure I can find enough time throughout the day that I can listen to it and just take quick notes on it. So, yeah. 
I don't know. I think it's doable, but you look at it and like the first day is like Genesis one through 42. Like it's, oh. <laughs> it's like, it's crazy when you look at some of these days. So I, I don't think reading it is going to be the way I'm going to do it, but I think listening to it is going to be. Can you imagine? And I, I don't want to bring this down for you, but <laughs> can you imagine like 42 chapters of numbers in Deuteronomy? <laughs> <laughs> So, so I think listening to those days, what stuck out to you? Nothing, nothing, nothing. at all. <laughs> there were a lot of generations yeah. of people. That's, yeah. that's yeah. all I got. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we'll see, but yeah, that's going to be my plan to, well, this is still fresh to really just kind of see what <laughs> pops out, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see how far I get. <laughs> okay. So uh, right. as we're getting into our reading for this week. Yes. It was, it was very interesting. Um, something, so just to kind of like do not a brush over of Revelations, but sort of a yeah. brush over Revelations. Uh, Revelations is a very interesting book. It's apocalyptic, apocalyptic genre. We actually hit two different genres this week. Um, number one, we hit, we had several letters from John. Mm-hmm. We had the letter from Jude, or was it to Jude, about Jude? doesn't matter <laughs> jude in general just <laughs> it's, <Jude>. it's <laughs> blanking me right now i can't did, remember <laughs> but did i just listen to the beatles song hey jude maybe hey that jude. was it <laughs> <laughs> so we had several letters and then we had uh what is considered apocalyptic genre in the bible um which does show up during like sometimes during the old testament in like books of the prophets we get some of this apocalyptic genre What's characteristic of it is these this very interesting juxtaposition of very specific details swallowed by very ambiguous symbolism. <laughs> wow. You, I love when you use big words. You're so smart. <laughs> that was a whole lot. <laughs> See, but if you think yeah. about it, that is what it is. Like you'll have, yes. there's like these very specific details, like, and they built a statue or he got injured or whatever, followed yeah. by these very ambiguous. <laughs> like symbolism like there was there was a dragon there was like a, a pregnant <laughs> woman who definitely did not symbolize a pregnant woman there was no way no i would be but very surprised a, if that was literal <laughs> yeah but that's and that's the thing is he goes so over the like it's it's crazy not crazy is the wrong word because that kind of brings down the whole thing but i mean it's just the amount of detail and like the over the top gesture of how when I was reading it, cause you, you kind of feel his emotion when he's reading this. There's many times where there there's weeping or there there's yeah. falling to his knees. Like, and so for him to be writing this all down, it's just like to be taking this in and getting this vision from god it's just like it's so powerful and to for him to try to just symbolize it with these grand over the top major things is pretty intense well if you think about it from the perspective of you know we always say look look at other parts of the bible for similarities uh i think that we can definitely see this in like the use of symbolism in joseph's dreams all of his mm-hmm. dreams had symbolism in it. Yeah. Often very odd symbolism, <laughs> like the starving cows eating yeah. the, the fat cows. And that was <laughs> seven years of famine. Yeah. Um, so it's not it's not um, out of character for God, I want to say, to use symbolism. But yeah. I think it would be, I think it's a stretch to take all of this literally. Um, and some people have, and there's certainly well, a possibility that some of this is literal, but I think it's very much a stretch taking in the literary context to say revelations is a literal book of the Bible. Yeah. Well, and that's, I found myself taking like little notes and just writing down the different numbers and writing down the different things. And I'm like, I can see where people get absolutely just lost in this book and they Mm -hmm. don't leave it. Like they, this is all they want to obsess about. And, and I can see where that comes in because there's so many things that you could just obsess trying to find the meaning of that one little thing that you could, (laughs) you could stay here and, and try to 
just, I think that's where people get caught up trying to make it say what they want it to say or make it mean what they want it to mean instead of trying to just find the purpose of it. Yeah. Yeah. Which is what I think we very much settled on um, just from our discussion. So I think that the big, I think there were two large themes that I picked out as I was reading this week. Uh, The first one was very much love, which came off pretty heavily in John's letters. Um, It also got hit on several times in Revelations itself. And then the second is really just, this was judgment that that is happening, you know, in Revelations. And it, (laughs) like all the justice we have cried for our entire lives is culminated in these 22 chapters of Revelations. Um, all the justice that anybody has ever wanted is culminated in, in, in these 22 chapters of Revelations. And what I found very interesting about it was this juxtaposition with this concept of love. Uh, love one another. Love God. God loves you. And this is what happens at the end of the world. <laughs> yeah, well, and I think that's, I think it's a good thing to, to really end with because of the fact that it's it's showing that god is still god the power of god is still there it it, there's still god's ability to judge and to put an end to things (laughs) you know there, there there still has to be that and we still have to understand that that's still there and Mm -hmm. it it's still what i loved about it was at every judgment or every part of this book, there was still the opportunity for people to repent and turn to God in every part of it. Like once again, God as powerful and his ability to judge and put an end to it. He still has the ability to love and forgive and give people opportunities, you know, and that's, that's what I found so great about it. And what stood out to me was at every turn, there wasn't a spot that said, well, and God just ignored people. (laughs) There was still the opportunity for them to turn to him. Well, and really, I mean, that is the entirety of the Bible (laughs) starting with Adam and Eve is this concept of God is a just God as we see here, Mm -hmm. but his mercy is, comes before it or yeah. triumphs triumphs over it continuously throughout the Bible. I mean, that's basically the story of the Bible is God's great mercy in the face of the justice that um, we deserve. Yeah. Is what it comes and, down to. And that was, once again, I think just full circle and the awesome feeling of getting through the Bible in a year is we started the year thinking about, man, could you imagine what it would be like to just walk with God, to be in relationship with him, to fit. And now we're seeing it. And it says right here, like, that is what awaits us in heaven. That's, <laughs> that's the prize or the, the end goal here of being a Christ follower, of believing in God, is we are going to have that opportunity to be in his presence again. And I just think that's so powerful to come full circle of going from wow what would you think that would be like to oh wait a second we can find out what that's gonna be like (laughs) so i don't know i think that's really good to invest that time to really dive into it so that can have an impact in your life like that can really sit with you and and give you a purpose for why why we believe what we believe and why we're doing what we're doing. Yeah. So uh, to hit on some of the verses that, that I wrote down, um, love going back to the two, two different topics. Love was a a pretty big topic. Um, I think one of the bigger ones was actually in revelations, which really hit me. It's revelation chapter two, verses four through five. And it says, but I have this complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. Look how far you have fallen. 
Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. If you don't repent, I will come and remove your lampstand from its place among the churches. Um, I thought this was a very interesting verse to get to at the end of the Bible. You know, as, as we think about our own spiritual journeys and even our journey through the Bible, it's just very interesting to have this concept of you do not love me as you did at first. I mean, if you look back on the beginning of your spiritual journey mm. or if it's been a while for you looking at the beginning of somebody else's spiritual journey and how much passion and how much um, depth our love for God and, and, and each other just permeated our life at the beginning of our spiritual journey when we first accepted Jesus and yeah. to see how that wanes in people. And to just have this interesting concept of we're getting to the end of the chronological Bible and God is saying to people, he's saying to the churches, you don't love me like you used to. Why not? Why is that? You turned away. You, you're not doing the works that you used to do. You're not going after people for Jesus like you used to do. And uh, I felt that very intensely as I was reading this, especially going into revelations and seeing what you were saying of this concept of, yeah, there's all this justice happening and there's all of these opportunities God is giving people to repent. Are we asking them? <laughs> yeah. Well, Are we doing it, it like we used to do it? Yeah. And that's, I think throughout this, that's been the biggest thing that's for me personally is like, where have I been with my personal relationship and my personal journey and have I just made this part of my job or part of what I've been doing and do I just gloss over it because like there was a to get back to on a daily basis are we finding joy and are we being active in it like you look at over and over people have the same stories and it's like do you, are you creating new stories are there new people that you're inviting into it or are you just telling the same stories of what used to happen or what happened when you first were transformed. Are you continually being transformed in Jesus? Is he continually working in your life? And if the answer is, well, no, he's not, then this verse should really hit you to where, wow, <laughs> what happened? Like, where did it go? Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think this leads actually quite nicely into the, Later on, you look in chapter three, Revelations, um, and it's talking about Laodicea. So this is the church of Laodicea. Starts in verse 14 through 17, verse 19. Write this letter to the angel in the church of, La of the church in Laodicea. This is the message from the one who is the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's new creation. I know all the things you do, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were one or the other, but since you are like lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. You say, I am rich. I have everything I want. I don't need a thing. And you don't realize that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. And then this was the big one in verse 19. I correct and discipline everyone I love. So be diligent and turn away from your indifference. And what's very interesting about this is that people have often interpreted this part about hot or cold as they do some of the previous letters that Paul has written, like, okay, well, I'd rather not be a Christian or be a really good Christian than kind of be where I'm at now. Yeah. This is similar, but it's not actually what he's talking about here. Uh, we talk about like historical, um, historical context. So if you look at archeologically where Laodicea was, Laodicea was in this valley and on either side of it were these two different cities up on a mountain. One had hot springs, one had cold springs. And they were both great places to be. And then Laodicea would get water from one of these places. But by the time the water came down to them, it was lukewarm. <laughs> and so it's just this very strong idea of, listen, the churches around you, they have the, the hot springs, which is really good. Or they have the cold springs, which is really good. And you just have this very lukewarm, indifferent lifestyle. And it goes back to that, you know, you do not love me as you did at first. Yeah. And it's talking about in this verse. But <laughs> you are saying, I'm rich. I have everything I want. I don't need anything. Mm -hmm. And that had become their existence where 
they were so content with the way that their life was, they didn't necessarily care about what was going on around them. Yeah. And I felt and- like, I feel like that's the call. That was the call of revelation to me. Like to look at this book of the Bible, that's very sobering in the concept of what, what you and I read could be the fate of our neighbors. Yeah. It could be the fate of our family. And are, are we treating it like it is or are we yeah. kind of indifferent about it? Well, and that's, I mean, that will transition us probably to our next step eventually, but that's the biggest thing is like the exclamation point on reading this chronologically and getting to this point. And then really this speaking into your life in such a way that, man, there are people in this world that this is their fate. This is where they're going to end up. And if you really love people, why are you not trying to go after as many as possible to save them from that? And and that's the biggest thing. But, you know, I, there's awesome beauty in the way the Bible is set up. And I love how John writes this to these seven churches, but each of these seven churches have a character maybe character flaw or at least the characteristics of the church that can speak into churches or individuals today in such a way that it, yes, it was impactful and meaningful for the people that it was being written to, but it also is written in such a way that we can see ourselves in it right now, thousands and thousands of years later, you know, Mm -hmm. that's, that's the biggest thing for me that I was looking at it and you can see, when he talks about a sleeping church, when he talks about false prophets, when he talks about um, people who have abandoned Christ or the, you know, lukewarm, he talks about all those things and yeah, they're characteristics of the church that he's writing to, but also they're characteristics of our everyday life right now that we're going through. Yeah. So I think it's, it's really great that he does that and you can read it from a oh okay historically yeah this is where these churches were but you can also look at it as a wow where am i at or where you know what am i going through i think that's really an awesome way to really drive home how important this is you know hermeneutics Uh, how to apply the original pen and meeting to your life man it's (laughs) It's like it's out there somewhere. It's, man, crazy. It's like Eric, you just keep before. bringing it up. You keep bringing it back in. <laughs> you know, and try to try to drive it home. You know, try. do you have any specific verses you want to look at before we go into our next steps? No, I like I said, and I think my the big verse that I just made sure I highlighted because, like I said, there was so much of it. But um, I just I love. I I love the end of it for so many reasons, not just because we were getting to the end of it, but I mean, when Jesus is actually talking, he says, blessed are those who wash their robes. They might have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates of the city. And it says outsides of the dogs who practice magic arts, sexual immoral, the murderers, the others and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. It, it shows even at the end that the people that are doing wrong, the people that are not the best people are still there outside the gates. And that shows that hope of how the, the revelations end where it just says, come, let the ones who hear come. And I don't think those are next to each other by accident because when it says, and let the ones who hear say, come like those murderers, those people are right outside the gates. They can hear that. You know that I just, for me, and like I said, people might look at that and be like, that's not what that means. I dove into that. But for me, that stuck out that even at the very end, people are still able to hear that call, Yeah, which is pretty awesome. So that, my big verse was right at the end there to put an exclamation point on everything that we read was that chunk of scripture for me. I actually read that down as well. 
and that was that's like kind of my next step of revelations 22 17 uh, the spirit and the bride say come let any let anyone who hears this anyone who reads this say come let anyone who is thirsty come let anyone who desires drink freely freely from the water of life i think that at the end of this what we pretty well settle on is that we are called to call people to the life of that Jesus has given us. And uh, again, it does, it does go back to like, this is a recap of the whole Bible. Yeah. <laughs> like we started out in uh, with Adam and Eve, where we get separated from God. There's this whole turmoil of trying to get to righteousness through the law and sacrificing sheep and people dying. And yeah. then we hit on Jesus he pays for sin. He gives us a second chance. And then there's this whole movement to tell about that joy to the whole world. And here we are and we're settling in revelations and, and remembering to that verse that we hit on, I think it was last week where it says, listen, God is not holding off the end of the world because he's not correct or he's not right. He's doing it because he's trying to save as many people as possible. Yeah. And here we are in revelations seeing a picture of what that's going to look like. But are we really, are we really living like we believe the whole Bible? Are we really living like we believe that message and purpose of, Hey, Jesus Christ is the answer to our sin. Certainly it's the answer to the sin of, of our neighbors. It's the answer to the sin of our family. It's the answer to the sin of strangers. And, you know, I was so, I was so hit by this. I think I literally dr had a dream last night where I was like telling people about Jesus because I was so, it, it felt so heavy to me. And I've, and I think that for, I think my next step is not to tell people, oh, go out and do this. I yeah. want to say my recommended next step coming to the end of this year is to pray and to pray fervently that God will put th the depth of how serious this is onto your heart. Yeah. You know, we, we get from all over the place, go tell people about Jesus, go tell people about Jesus, go tell people about Jesus. We're, we're clearly not doing it all the time, <laughs> but <laughs> what I want to say is I'm not going to tell you, go tell people about Jesus. The Bible tells you that yeah. <laughs> wherever you look. What I'm going to say is I'm going to say for my next step, pray fervently that God will put the seriousness of your neighbor's future or your family's future or a stranger's future onto your heart, because this is very serious. Yeah. And, and I think going along with that and we, we see this, but it's yes, hopefully you see the importance of sharing this message and you feel the importance of it, but also in your own life, like, are you really letting these words and letting scripture and letting Jesus impact your life in such a way that you are constantly changing and growing and being active? Or are you just sitting there going, yeah, I accepted Jesus. I'm good. Yeah. You know, are you like, Laodicea? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. You're like, oh, I'm rich. <laughs> I have everything yeah. I want. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so that's where I think, yeah. Check your, you know, Check prepare yourself. your heart. Prepare. Oh, whoa. Whoa. I don't whoa. know. I don't know if we're ready for that. I don't okay. know. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. But I mean, prepare your heart though. And yes. <laughs> prepare your heart yeah. for 2021. Yeah. Tomorrow. Just, <laughs> if you if you read through the Bible chronologically in a year or read through the Bible in a year in any way, and you got to this point and you don't feel this, this feeling of, of need to go and do this stuff or the need to really let this speak into your life and move your life, then we weren't reading the same book. <laughs> that so many times and getting to this point, I'm looking at 2021 and I'm like going into this next year, I need to make sure I live out what I just read. 
Mm-hmm. You know, that's, that's the biggest thing for me is for my next step is how can I individually start living this out in such a way that I can see what we read being put out there into the world. You know, so that's that's my biggest thing is what part of this throughout the year and what part of this call has impacted you in such a way that you are going to go and be active. Yeah. So we made it to end uh, this is the end of 2020. Yeah, I do think uh, we should appropriately end with the last two verses of the Bible. (laughs) Boom! look at that. Put we could. So Revelations 22, verses 20 through 21. He, being Jesus, who is the faithful witness to all these... Oh, actually, this is John, sorry. John, who's the faithful witness to all these things, says, yes, I'm coming soon. No, it is Jesus. It is Jesus. It's in red letters. It's in red (laughs) letters. It's in red letters. (laughs) Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. May the grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's holy people. Um, You know, certainly be convicted. Share the news of Jesus with other people. But I would say, hey, at the end of a tough year, rejoice that Jesus yes. came for you. Yes. <laughs> that you, as someone who has accepted Jesus, I'm hoping you accepted Jesus, gets to bypass this horrifying judgment. And if you have not accepted Jesus, I want to say, make today your day. Start 2021 as a follower of Jesus Christ. It's so simple. Yeah. You repent, say, I'm sorry for my sins. I don't want to go back to that life. God, I believe that you died for me. I believe that you paid for that. And I accept you as Lord of my life. Boom. You get nailed it. And then you get that awesome, what we just read in Revelation, that awesome scene of rejoice and worship. Like that, that's the thing is, I think when you read revelations and now I'm going to go off on this again, but you read it and, and you talk about the judgment and everything that was passed down, but also don't miss the rejoicing and the, the celebration and the excitement of it yeah. too. Like what side do you want to be on? <laughs> that's, that's the biggest thing. And, and after reading that, I think I want to be on the rejoicing, celebrating and worshiping side. Yeah. I think that would be the, the side where I want to land. So Revelations 5, 5, stop weeping. Look, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the heir to David's throne, has won the victory. Boom. Boom. Winning. 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 Jesus. (laughs) Jesus. That's what we get at the end of the Bible. (laughs) Jesus. Winning. Winning. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Anna, this has been a year. I'm telling you what. Thank you for letting me be a part of this. This has been very cool. I I have enjoyed it. And Eric, I just want to, I just want to end with Jesus died for you. Hey, (laughs) oh, look at that. See, (laughs) (laughs) you you know what? I hope everybody has an awesome, safe new year and gets to enjoy it. However, they're going to enjoy it and get ready for an awesome year ahead. Yeah. True. Do you want to end with prayer? You want to pray for people? You know what? Let's do it. Why not? All right. All right. Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you for who you are. I thank you for the scripture that we got to dive into throughout this year. I thank you for your son, Jesus. I thank you that we've got to share this time together. We've got to celebrate you. We've got to hear about you. And we've got this opportunity to be challenged by you to continually seek out people and help introduce them to you and help let them see that you have such an impact in their life, that there's so much that can happen when they bring you into their life, when they open their hearts, when they start changing their life for the better, that there can be light in all of this darkness, that no matter where we're at, you accept us, you love us, you care for us. And there's always that opportunity for relationship. We pray for everyone out there as they go out of 2020 into 2021, that they do it with a joy with uh, excitement, with uh, uh, happiness and a peace in their spirit, knowing that you are with them and knowing that we can do anything for you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. All right. Bye. Bye, everybody. (laughs) (laughs) Uh...